the first second that we get a we have a gifting in the church, we're put to work. Mm. If you have a voice and you can sing, oh, you you're called to the work of ministry. You can also lead worship. You get a revelation. Oh, here, share that on the mic. Well, that's amazing. And they put you to work. Mm. Yeah. They never taught. They never teach us how to have communion. Like, hey, this is how you get to know the Lord. Hi, all liars. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am the Fisayo, and I'm a tourism development advocate. I tell stories from within the sessions I visit, inviting you to my world of travel, and giving you insight on what needs to be improved in some African destinations so that Africa can position itself to be the number one tourist destination in the world. Enjoy this video. Hi Outliers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am the Pisayo and I'm an award-winning travel blogger and entrepreneur. So today, I am inviting one of my favorite people. If you follow me on Instagram, you would know this already because it's always on my story almost every week. You know, and he's one of Maverick City music artists. He's no other person than <laughs> Joe L. Band. I'm super excited. You're going to listen to it. I don't want to, you know, give you all the backstory, but I want you to get ready to be blessed. Sit back, enjoy, share this video if it's ministering to you in any way, shape, or form. And let me know who do you want me to, you know, invite in upcoming episodes. By the way, this is an episode for my podcast. So I have a podcast on Apple News, app, um, on Apple Podcasts rather than other platforms. Uh, you know but i don't usually share the video format but today i decided okay let's do this let's share a video and let's see how that goes from here uh, yeah and this season we're going to be focusing on becoming previous seasons we've had different themes this season is called becoming and this is going to be our first guest for the fourth season i'm super excited let's get into it by the way if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe like this video share it like i said if you enjoy it and I'll see you at the end of the video. All right. Welcome, Joel Bans, to the Big Dreamers podcast. How are you doing? Good. Good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm super excited to be speaking with you. And I wanted to know, um, while doing research on you, while watching all your videos, watching all your interviews, I wondered, what does the L in your name mean, Joel Bans? Oh, uh, it doesn't mean anything. It's it's my actual name is just J O E L, but I don't want people to say Joel. I want people to say Joel. So, all right, all right. So let's get into it. Um, I want we want to know. So I asked a few people that um, know that I will be interviewing you today to tell me what are the questions you would like Joel Bands to answer. What are the things you want to know more about Joel Bands? And Judith says, "What was your teenage years like, and how did you discover purpose?" Um, teenage years were interesting. I mean, I, uh, they were kind of heavy, good, bad, and ugly. I would say, I think I've, I experienced a lot in my teenage years, um, from like amazing moments to death and loss and grieving to really discovering who the Lord is. All of that happened in my teenage years. And how was it like, I mean, what was your church background growing up that produced the youth that you had today? So I grew up um, in a non-denominational church with my mom um, being an evangelist, my aunt, my uncle and my cousin being the pastors. Like I was raised in church, you know what I mean? Um, but um, I that gave me foundation. But I learned, it gave me foundation of like what it means to be in the faith. But I actually learned who God was later on in my 20s by actually re- constructing my beliefs and letting him teach me who he actually is so now that you i mean from what you've said you did not have you know your parents were not pastors so what led you into worshiping being a worship leader i always had a respect for the lord i've always had a love for music but i think that um around 2014 is when i got engulfed into the worship like culture and that was back when um, Amanda Cook, Stephanie Gretzinger, um, Jeremy Riddle, William Matthews, all of them were at Bethel. And I had no idea what any of that stuff was until I like just got submerged into the culture. So I fell in love with worship at that point. How old were you? 20. Okay. Okay. So what was the first song you ever wrote? Um, my first song I've ever, I had ever written was when I was, I want to say... 13 when i was 13 i mean my older brother wrote a song together and i would never you'll never hear it um <laughs> it's terrible it was, it was just like really like 
like kitty kids bop like pop record you'll never hear it but yeah so you're, not proud, was, you're not proud of the song you're not proud of what you're missing uh no nah, it was it was fun it was cool for the time being like but the world will never hear it was it was it a jam then when you wrote it mm-hmm. was it a jam like was it something you were listening to over and over again and dancing to <laughs> oh yeah i would like yeah it was one of those it was definitely a bop but no i would never, never sing it for the world and then the next one was when 13 as well your next song after then was still the same age 16. oh three years i'll come i'll come yeah um it took three years later because <laughs> i just I, you know i was processing so my brother was teaching me and training me and helping me learn how to be a songwriter so like the 16 is where i wrote my first song by myself okay. Oh, okay. So, okay. So the first one was with your brother training you. So I want to know right now, when you lead songs, what, what's, what's the best song you would lean to most of the time? When I'm leading? Yes. Um, probably... Um, I don't know. I lean to a lot of songs depending on like the mo- what the moment is calling for. I don't know. I I lean from songs from like old hymns to old songs like "Shout to the mm-hmm. Lord" to uh, "Great Is Thy Faithfulness" to um, anything like that. Like I lean onto a lot of different records, so it just depends. Like I'm. Different moments call for different things, and like I just draw from the well that's been built. Mm-hmm. It's a cool song, so I love that. Thank you for your thank you for your honesty. So you've been a songwriter since the age of thirteen. You became, you know, a solo songwriter at the age of sixteen. You started leading mm-hmm. worship at the age of twenty. What has been the major challenges you've faced so far as a um, worship leader or artist generally? I think the challenge that I had to face was that I thought that everything fell on me. So like if I didn't lead worship to the capacity I knew I could, or if I didn't, if I missed the note or I missed the timing or I messed up, I would carry this thing of like, Oh, I'm terrible. I should never be a worship. I should stop doing blah, blah, blah. And I thought it was my responsibility to lead worship to a people until I met my spiritual father who told me, no, we are, it's not the worship team leading to the people. We are, everybody in the room is a part of one worship team. And our job is to lead worship to the audience of one, which is the Lord alone, which mm-hmm. took the pressure off of me. Mm-hmm. So I felt, I used to feel inadequate if I didn't lead worship the way I knew I could. Or if, if, no, if nothing in the room moved. Like, yeah. If, yeah, so that was one of the challenges that I faced as a worship leader. And that definitely helped lift the burden off you. Made you feel lighter and, you know, I'm sure you must have felt even much. Yeah, no pressure. Now, exactly. I understand, now I understand whenever I lead, it's like, there's not as much pressure. There's a weight that that we all carry. <sighs> I apologize. There's a weight that we all carry um, as worship leaders, as songwriters, as whatever, because there's a like worship leading is a priesthood, mm. and it, it comes yeah. with conviction. And there's a weight, but it's not. There's no pressure. It's just a weight. And, and like we carry it with like with honor as about we carry it with honor like hey this is so was, good for someone listening right now that possibly is a worship leader and has or had or currently is going through that same what what would be what would your advice be to the person no oh, it doesn't fall on you it's not your responsibility to, lead to the people we are all one worship team leading to the audience of one and god's presence is not fragile so you can't break it don't think that a bad note or a missing or a misstep is going to break God's presence. It's not, it's not fragile. So don't be too hard on yourself. Thank you. So I was, I mean, by the way, come back home. I love it. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well yeah. done. Well done. So I listened to the music yesterday over and over and over again, you know, as many times as possible, even the video as well. And it's funny how my devotional for yesterday was in relation to, although the context might be different, but it says, in, you know, in summary, come back home, referring to the prodigal son, how the prodigal son, you know, left and came back home. 
come back home, you know, in relation to you being saved. I mean, I could relate it to so many things when I listen to Come Back Home. But I want to know, what was the context going through your mind when writing Come Back Home? Um, I mean, you could say, like, prodigal son, but it's more so, like, I don't have any children yet. So for me, it was just, like, I'm, this is a message to the people that, to the friends that I've had, that, have, that have, we've had to go our separate ways because of circumstances, situations, whatever. It's just an invitation to saying, hey, eventually the situation that caused us to be divided won't won't matter as much and the division and the separation the gulf between us will close eventually we'll get back to how it used to be like it's just an invitation to say hey i'm not mad at you i don't hate you i honestly want the friendship to to come to go back to the to its original like state of like being being in a healthy way but yeah yeah, it's just invitation like don't I know the rest of this genuine friendship, a lot of times hard to find, especially in the industry that we're in. So it's like, bro, come back to a space where it's not about your performance. It's just about you being there. Mm -hmm. We live in such a performance-based culture. So finding relationships that are not performance-based, they're rare. So just want to enjoy those and be engulfed in those. It's like, you don't have to perform. You don't have to be the best version of yourself possible the best version is possible for me to love you. Like, nah, like love should be without um, conditions. Just like, look, I just love you because you, because you're you, not because what you can do for me. Not for what you can do to make me feel good about myself. Mm-hmm. No, I love you because I love you. I don't need anything from you. So oh, when you come back home, Oh, won't you come back home? Ooh, when you come back home, won't you come back home? Why, why do you think now was the right time to release the music? Um, Because I think that a lot of times, I think that the one thing that we need right now more than ever is we need a place to call home. Sorry, come again. I think right now more than ever, we need a place to call home. A lot of people are, they don't know where home is. It's not just about a geographical place. It's about a people. Where's home for us? Where's home? Where's the mentors and the guidances and the spiritual fathers and mothers are going to help us? Where's the community that we can be surrounded by that help us become better versions of ourselves? Like we need home. That's, and it's not a performance-based culture. You don't have to do anything here, but just be yourself. So you mentioned that um, you don't want it. I mean, we, have, we live in a performance-based culture these days. Um, you want, it's better you know, to create friendships organically. So when I listen to that and listen to the music, I'm thinking, have you, have you been in a situation whereby you, you, know, you had a friendship that you know, felt more performance-based than yeah, of course. Being organic. Of course. And it's not about like, hey, you stop performing well, I'm going to stop loving you. It's more so like, it wasn't even this. It's more so like, hey, I do this and I do that to show you I love you. I'm like, I, you don't have to do any of that. I, don't, I didn't ask for any of that. The things that I actually want are not performance. It's not about what you do for me. It's about the fact that I just want to, I just want this stuff. I don't want the big stuff. Don't open the door. Don't do this, that, and a third. Don't try to perform. Or, uh, you know what I mean? Actually, just, I just want to spend time. I just want to kick it. I want the little moments. I want the, the things on the in-between. I don't, I, want, I don't want just the big moments. I want the, the little moments and everything in between. And that's the thing. So performance-based relationships are not just all about the moment you stop performing. That's, you're no longer interesting to me. It's more so like, hey, I do this and show up and do that and do this, that, and third to show you that I look. And it's like, bro, but you don't have to do all of that. Like a lot of like, just to give you an example, there's there might be a situation where there's a man that's trying to wine and dine a girl that he's trying to like get atten- get their, get her attention, but if she and but if she's a woman, it's like, no, nah, I can get it myself. I actually, I honestly just want to see if you're a good person. You can have all the money in the world, but if you're not a good person, I don't want to be a test of that. I'm independent. I don't need you to do this stuff for me. I just want to see if you're a good person. And the fact that you're trying to do all this stuff makes me feel like you're trying to overcompensate for 
In fact, you're probably not a good person, so I'm uninterested now. See what I'm saying? Like, but that's performance based. He's he, he's probably thinking about like, oh, I have to perform well for her to love me. I gotta show that I can do all of this stuff for her to love me, and that's the problem. So honestly, I, when I when you when you say this, I'm thinking far and wide as to not just romantic relationships, but platonic relationships with your friends. And then I think about how most people have bad examples of what friendships should be like. Maybe, you know, they probably possibly never saw, you know, good friendships with their parents or, you know, I'm just trying to think large and wide. What then would you say the solution to things like this are? Because priorities now is there is no foundation. There is no role model to look up to in that area. What then would you say, oh, for anyone listening, how can I build genuine relationships? As far as platonic relationships, I think just be honest. Um, give everybody a chance to be human and be and grow. Like, don't don't like befriend people or get connected with people because of their potential and where they where you think they're going. But but do it, like if they're a good person to be around, they're just fun to hang around and like they're gonna they're gonna grind and like or they're gonna help you in a healthy way become a better version of yourself. They're gonna call you out on your nonsense. Like, hey, that's not who you are. You're, you're a good person. You're this, you're that, you're that. They're going to speak into you, speak life into you. They're going to sharpen you. Like your best friends are the friends that bring out the best in you. The Bible talks about iron sharpening iron. So I think you need to find friends that that see the, the best in you and try to help cultivate a space that brings that out. So right. I think that that's what I would say. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. For listeners that possibly didn't know about, you know, Come Back Home and now they do, when they do listen to Come Back Home, what do you hope they would get out of it when they listen? That they'll hear the invitation of the whisper to go to find home, to, to, to ask God to guide their feet. Mm-hmm. Ask God to guide their feet to wherever home is for them. Awesome. So I want to get into a quick these are that question. And these are, things, these are a few things that I, you know, based on my research on you, I have discovered, oh, these are the things he likes, but which one would you choose, this or this? So the first is R&B and or pop. Pop. Reggae or Afrobeat? <laughs> Afrobeat. Ooh. Basketball or basketball? <laughs> basketball. I know. So singing or writing? That is an amazing question. Um, probably writing because you can deliver a song without doing amazing like like vocal techniques or whatever or runs up and down a scale, and it's amazing because if you write it well, if it's written well, it's amazing. You can try to, but if it's not written well, you can try to master with singing. So writing but sometimes it won't work. So writing. Why do you enjoy writing so much though? Because you're taking a you're painting a picture. Mm. You're using words to paint a picture in someone's in someone's mind or a sketch of or a sketch of painting on someone's heart, like with a record, like writing. That's why you got poetry. Yeah. Songwriting without 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 melody is poetry. Mm. Bar. So the next is writing or playing. So the next is writing or playing an instrument. I know you don't play an instrument, but would you rather play an instrument acoustic. or write? Sorry? I'm learning, I'm learning acoustic, but yeah, writing still. Oh, 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 nice. That's awesome. So what's your favorite basketball team? I don't have a basketball. I don't have a favorite team anymore. Why? <laughs> what up? Because I don't. Because the NBA doesn't have a loyalty to players, but they expect players to have a loyalty to them, and I, I can't respect that. Mm. So next season, we, there will be nobody you'll be vouching for. Okay. Oh. Okay. So dancing or gym workouts? Gym workouts. Oh, I thought you liked dancing. So Old Testament or New Testament? New Testament. We're not on the inferior covenant. Come again, please. I didn't get that. New, New Testament. Okay. I said, I asked a few people to send me questions for you. And a lady named Lily says, 
he wants she wants to know your age but i'm assuming it's going to be 27 on the 3rd of august if that's correct um uh yeah be 27 in august yes yes so she wants to know do you listen to secular music as well and what kind <laughs> I do, and I listen to country. Country, nice. Why country? They tell the best stories. Okay. So she also wants to know, do you plan to have a solo career outside of Maverick? Yeah. Yay. So talking of which, this is your first single. When is your album coming out? Because I've been looking forward to it. I mean, I listened to one of your interviews, like I said, and you mentioned last year that you'll be releasing your album this year. So when is that going to be? I don't know. I'm releasing, I'm just releasing songs right now to see what, what happens and what sticks. Okay, we are waiting. So there's a lady named Judith. She wants to know what was the most defining moment in your relationship with God? that lets you know you wanted to follow God all the days of your life? When I found out that he wasn't that, when I found out that he wasn't a dictating judge, a distant dictating judge, but I found out he's a very close and present father. That's what made me want to follow him. Was this when you were 20? More or less, yeah. It seemed like when you were 20, it was, you know, it seemed like that was a year of discovery for you. Do you want to share more on that? Um, it was the year, a year of discovery for me. I mean, I, I started traveling with a guy named Eddie James back then, and it was intense. It was, the, it was intense. Um, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. But I also learned how my, how to develop my own relationship with the Lord. That's awesome. Um, for now, like I'm, um, when I listen to, you know, different videos and interviews that you're granted, I think to myself, Joel is a preacher. I don't know if you know this, you have this in you, like you, you speak to wisdom, no, for real. I'm like, yo, when you speak, I write it down, like, yo, this is the word for today. Um, I'm going to mention a few. Let me see. I think I wrote it. Yeah, yeah. You look back on the time God has blessed you, and if He did it, then He will do it now. So you mentioned. So there's a, there's one of there was an interview you granted to influencers um, on an influencer podcast. You mentioned how you basically broke down how the promises of God um, might not come in your time, but right. your children, your generation to come, might be the one to you know, enjoy, you know, the fertility of that promise that God has given you. Right. So where do you, I mean, I mean, I know for you to have all of this wisdom, when I listen to you, I'm like, you must spend so much time in the word of God. For people that currently are still struggling spiritually in terms of connecting and knowing more of God's love, how did you develop that? I'm just a product of good mentorship. Sorry? I'm just a product of good mentorship. I have great mentors and a spiritual father and spiritual mother in my life. Like I'm, I'm not that smart. I just hang around smart people. Mm. <laughs> okay. So your, your advice is good role models, get good role models or good mentors. Yeah. yeah. Everybody needs spiritual fathers, spiritual fathers, spiritual mothers and friends that help sharpen them. I'm not that smart. I just hang around smart people. Awesome. But you, I want to know, you spend personal time, you know, personal time with God as well? Yeah, of course. All right. I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm a word nerd. So I like, if it has phrases that stick out to me, I stick, like I'm, I absorb it. And I'm like, this, this is amazing. Yeah. So what are the, what are the, I, two think, quotes I was watching, I was watching this, I was watching a show called Lovecraft Country. Which I don't recommend for you people to watch. It's kind of like wow, but um, I when I watched it, there was a line that this this that came in one of the scenes, and it says, "We were we are all capable of monstrous things, but that's but that doesn't make us monsters. We have the freedom to choose who and what we want to be." 
Word. Yeah. And I'm like, I love that. So mm-hmm. I think that, or when I was watching The Chosen, Mary Madeline said, all I know is that I was one way and then I was another. And what happened in the middle was him. Mm. I love, I love that. I'm going to share two more quotes that you've shared. You said, cool. if you rush through life, you would miss the scenery. Do you remember yep. that? And then you said, I don't know if you remember this, communion is easy, but commission isn't easy. So when you say this, can you shed more light on that? I don't know if you remember that. Um, we get so focused on the commissioning that we completely abandon the communion. Martha and Mary are the perfect example of this. Martha was working. Jesus is in the house. They're both, Martha and Mary are both in the presence of Jesus. Martha is using, is taking that time in the presence to work, 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 work. Mary is taking that time to rest and sit at his feet. Martha gets frustrated with Mary and says, God, Jesus, tell her to help me. And he said, Mary, Martha, you're troubled about a lot of things. But Mary chose the good part. And I'm not going to take that from her. We oftentimes, it's not, it's not necessarily our fault. It's literally, we were literally groomed and conditioning and like trained to be this way. The first second that we get a, we have a gifting in the church, we're put to work. Mm. If you have a voice and you can sing, oh, you're, you're called to the work of ministry, you can also lead worship. You get a revelation, oh, here, share that on the mic, but that's amazing. And they put you to work. Mm. Yeah. They never taught, they never teach us how to have communion. Like, hey, this is how you get to know the Lord. You get to, the thing is like, he's not a boss. He's a father. You, use a, you, ha, you have an opportunity to have a relationship with the person that you're working yeah. for. Yeah. So then out of the communion comes the commissioning. So when I go home to see my mom, I cut her grass because I love her, not because I feel like a slave to her. See what I'm saying? Like I, the commissioning comes out of the communion. We have, relate, we have relationship. So then I'm willing to put in the work afterwards because we have the relationship first. So like the commission, the communion is easy. Sometimes it's resting. Sometimes it's taking a nap. Sometimes it's, Sitting in the presence, and if you fall asleep, you're not like, don't feel convicted, like, oh Lord, you're gonna strike me. No. What fathers ever f- got upset at their children for falling asleep in their arms? Yeah. Doesn't really make sense. So that's what all of that means. That's like a very small version. Yeah. You see, preacher. <laughs> Thank nope. you. So yeah, I, I can totally relate to that because this year I have discovered more of God as a father. So it's beautiful when you explain it that way. Um now, being a worship leader, listening listen to the same songs over and over and over again, how do you keep it fresh? How do you keep it real? Um, I just sing the song and let God do whatever he wants to do. So that is just simple as that. I don't know. Singing the same songs, I'm just like, God, like, I, I stopped thinking it was about me. I'm just like, God, they came to encounter you. So if all they get is me, they're not going to be impressed and neither am I. So I'm going to sing the record and you can do the rest. Yeah. All right. Now you mentioned that you love writing and I know you've, you know, had a writing conference in the past. When is your next writing conference in case anyone wants to learn from you? Um, I'm thinking about doing one soon, actually. When? I think about doing one soon. I don't know, maybe next month, the month after, maybe August, maybe next month, maybe July. I don't know. I just got to find a day to do it. Is it going to be virtual or it's in Atlanta? Virtual. Yeah, I'll do another. I'll do a right summer in class uh, virtually, probably on Zoom. Okay. Okay. So I, I tried to I tried to get a date for your album, but you don't want to give that you, you don't want to give us a date yet. Is it you want to do for now? <laughs> It is. Okay. Okay. We're looking forward to it anyway. So one advice for yourself, your teenage self, what would it be? God. Move to Covington faster. Come again? Move to Covington faster. I don't know. I would Ooh. say like God, I would advice to my younger self, God is not a dictating judge. He's a very gentle and present father. If I would have had that revelation tucked into my heart a long time ago, life would be so much different. Yeah. I love that. So you're wearing eternal. I noticed you wear eternal in most of your videos. Is this your brand? Yeah. No, 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 no. It's a friend of mine. His name is Tyler. 
he um he designed eternal so okay. we've been friends we actually have been friends for a year and some change now so he sends me all of his like his merch stuff that he's coming out with and i'm like all right yeah we're i love it and we we've have we have an amazing friendship but we're in the works talking right now to like see if me and him can do a collaboration on some merch for when i when my album does come out yes so are we getting any merch for come back home i don't know <laughs> I want to wait. I don't. I want. I don't want. I don't want to put any merch out until later. Oh, uh, I hope it's not imposter syndrome stopping you from wanting to put it out because we are we're out here. We're here to support. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. Okay, no worries. We'll see. So one last question from Judith before we round up. She wants to know. You shared with us in Millions Little Miracles um, about the passion of your brother. Yeah. So she wants to know how, how that helped build your faith and the capacity to trust God. Because sometimes Christians, you know, love God when things are going good. And you know, so how do you love God in spite of, you know, so much pain? Um, I read a book by Bill Johnson that, and he said, God is good all the time, always. And in most of those situations when people would run from the Lord, choosing to cling to the Lord, we have a choice to either run or cling to the Lord. And I think that in those moments of darkness, it's like, I already feel like I don't know what I'm doing. But if I leave the one person that I feel like knows what they're doing, mm-hmm. how much more lost would I be? Like, there are things that I'm not going to understand on this side of eternity. I'm just not. And that's just the facts. I'm not going to understand a lot of things. But if your ways are higher than my ways and your thoughts are higher than my thoughts, that means that you have an understanding that I don't. So I'd rather trust you and even especially in the things that I don't understand, than to be out here on my own, fending for myself. Because if I'm on my own, I'm on my own. So I don't know. I saw my mom cling to the Lord in those moments, and it gave me the strength and the courage to cling to Him my, for myself. I don't know. Yeah, trust. From trust. what I from yeah, from what you said, trust is the key word. I mean, your most of your songs minister a lot in terms of even when you're not sure what the next step is, it, that is what promises are about as well. You just cling on to God's promises, knowing that He's going to remain faithful. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yes, thank you for sharing. So for um upcoming artists, what is your advice to them as we close this? Any advice to people listening? Uh, for upcoming artists, I say trust yourself. Trust the wind. Um, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Just go for it. Like, who cares? Like, the, if you feel like this is the sound that we need, then go for it. You're not going to be everybody's brand. Not everybody's going to love you. But there's somebody that needs to hear what you have to say. So go and feed the 25 people. Mm. Worry about the worry about the thousands later. I know for me, like there's probably there's 25 people that are that are really are wanting that really need to hear what I have to say. So I'm just aiming to feed those 25. I don't want to just entertain people with my music. I want to feed them. So whatever the people that are like, whatever the experiences that you have, whatever things that you've gone through, whatever like you feel in your heart, like somebody I went through this and I've struggled with this or I've dealt with this. I'm gonna write songs from a place to victory to encourage myself and to encourage people like me that have gone through these things. Even if it's just 25 people, I'll worry about the thousands later. Right Right now I just want to feed the 25. I want to steward and shepherd the 25. You know what? I love that because it doesn't just apply to artists. It applies to all kinds of content creators. And in the new age where you're most bothered about the views and bothered about the numbers and forget that it's the impact that matters. I love, I love that you mentioned that. So yeah, that would be my advice. All right. So 
I noticed while going through YouTube that you have two YouTube channels. Are they both yours or is it just one? So that we know which, which the one that is this Joel thing? Barnes. The, the one that's Joel Barnes uh, music is not mine. I don't know oh. who that they they took okay. my videos and posted them. I don't even know who they oh. are. Wow. Okay. So now we know that. So I'm going to leave the links, by the way, in the you know in the caption in the description. So the I know the two you know the two channels. So I know the way you're referring to. So I'm going to leave the links of that. And for every other person that would like to follow you, kindly share your social media handles. Yes, my Instagram is I am Joe underscore L, as well as my Twitter is I am Joe underscore L, and my uh, Facebook is just Joe L Barnes. All right, thank you so much, Joel. I'm so happy that you said yes to this interview. Anytime. I've had a good time. I've heard, I hope you've you know had a good, a good time sharing your experiences as well. Why did you it's say fun. yes to this interview? By the way. Um, I don't know. My, my manager, uh, my manager sent it to me and I'm like, yeah, why not? So Aww. I'm like, let's do it. Thank you so much. Love you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Love you too. Bye. Bye bye. And one of my key takeaways from everything he said was, you know, he's well grounded in mentorship. If anything, if you want, you're looking for ways to grow, find yourself good mentors someone that can keep you accountable spiritually. So you have to be careful who you choose as mentors as well, because of course they'll be teaching you their values. So make sure you choose people that you can, you, you know, you, you admire in terms of the kind of value system that they have and you want some of that in your life as well. I am looking forward to seeing your comments. What did you think of this episode? Please leave your comments. I love to read comments. I love, you know, words of affirmation is my thing. And I love to just know what people think about um, the videos and the content I create so you can see other ways to improve. So let me know what did you, what was your experience like listening to this episode? Did you learn anything? What would you be looking forward to listening more on, on my channel? And what um, um, what what um, artist or guest would you want me to bring on board? By the way, if you're not subscribed to my podcast, please go subscribe. It's called The Big Dreamers Podcast. On all platforms, the big dreamer actually, the big dreamer on all platforms, Apple, everywhere. <laughs> Apple is just one that comes to mind because that's what I stream from. We're everywhere. So, yeah, like this video if you did enjoy it. Please feel free to share this video as well. And tell me, I really want to know what you really learned. I am blessed by Joel Band every day, any day. And I hope you are blessed too. Yeah, that's it for today. Do not forget to stay awesome, stay inspired. Peace.